Hi, in this video we'll be running through an example Zendesk change management flow using a combination of Sweethawk apps. So the flow that we'll be going through today will start with a bunch of incidents linked to a problem. Uh, from the problem ticket we'll spin off the change ticket. Uh, within the change ticket we'll send out for approval for that change to be uh, implemented. We'll talk about how it can be uh, implemented and then we'll wrap things up. But note that this flow here is just one example of the type of thing that you can create using Zendesk and our apps. There are many alterations and additions that you could make to this process to make it match much more precisely to your business requirements. Uh, apps that we'll be using in this flow today, firstly would be the uh, condi field conditions app uh, for kind of creating conditionality around ticket fields. Uh, for example, showing and hiding the risk and impact field based on the change type, for example. Uh, then we'll be using the tasks app for creating links between tickets, for example, when you spin off a change ticket from a problem ticket. The approve app for sending out the approval and getting a uh, response back from the required parties before the change can be implemented. And then finally, the calendar app for planning when a change will take place. So these four apps are just uh, you know, for within a whole suite that we offer here at Sweethawk. Uh, they're all built with modularity in mind so you can pick and choose the apps you need to build whatever flows you want. Um, other apps that we won't show in this video but could potentially complement a change management flow uh, could be the Notify app for getting pop-up notifications inside of Zendesk based on important events, the Deadline uh, app for doing something at a particular date and time, the Future Tickets app for scheduling a follow-up ticket or follow-up tickets to be created X time in the future, and the Recurring Tickets app for creating tickets where changes need to happen on a repeating basis. So without further ado, let's uh, jump in uh, to our help desk here and we'll uh, run through a live flow. Now, as you can see here, I've, um, I'm in the problem tickets view um, and let's, uh, for this purposes of this uh, example, uh, let's pretend I'm the problem manager and I'm going to be uh, kind of responsible for uh, kind of looking after these tickets. If we jump into this one here, we can see that this ticket has uh, a bunch of incidences already linked to it uh, and if we click on incidents uh, then we can see uh, all of these tickets here. Um, so the beauty of having uh, this linking between the incidents and problems is that if I solve out this problem ticket then all of the linked incidences will also get the uh, same response. It's also great for visibility about you know being able to see which problems have got the most people um, making noise about them. Uh, now, from here though, uh, w w in order to be able to spin off a, uh, a change ticket from this problem ticket, we can't do it uh, via the, the method that we use uh, for linking incidents and problems because that is a native uh, piece of functionality in Zendesk. Uh, so for example, um, uh, you know, for any uh, ticket, you can mark it as an incident and you automatically get this ability to link it to a problem. And that's how uh, you get this link here. Um, versus between the two. Uh, but um, being able to do that with changes um, is not a native piece of functionality. So this is where our first app comes in, uh, the tasks app for being able to do this. So what I can do here is um, kind of create a task. So we'll say uh, to fix this problem, we'll need to move uh, our servers to the cloud. Um, it is a task at the moment, it's just a thing to be checked off, but uh, we can convert it into a much broader and bigger task uh, by converting it into a sub-ticket. So when I do that, um, and uh, you know, I can, when I do that, I can actually specify a template that's gonna predefine everything about this sub-ticket as well taking some information from this parent ticket is here as well. Uh, but uh, on the surface, uh, the way that a sub-ticket works is that you can see here, there's a link to uh, the sub-ticket. And on uh, this ticket that's just been created, uh, we can see that there's always a link back to uh, the parent ticket as well. Now, uh, as I mentioned, uh, the we used a template uh, to create this sub-ticket, so uh, that means that we can predefine whatever we want to be pushed into this sub-ticket, whether it's um, kind of copying the name of the task 
into the subject line or um, the, the details or the description of the conversation from the problem ticket into uh, the change ticket or presetting fields or presetting who the uh, ticket will be assigned to. All that's possible. Now, uh, from the problem uh, manager's perspective, uh, you know, once he's uh, spun up a change ticket, uh, from this point onwards, uh, he probably doesn't need to do a lot on this uh, problem ticket until that change ticket has been resolved in some way. Uh, so what I can do is actually uh, mark this ticket as on hold now. Uh, so that it gets it out of my uh, view. So, you know, in the problem tickets, I'm now not seeing servers keep becoming unresponsive um, as an, an open ticket, something I have to do. Uh, but um, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's out of, out of uh, uh, my mind at the moment. Um, but uh, so what we've got here is, is actually a flow uh, whereby when this uh, kind of sub ticket is completed, uh, or marked as solved, that will automatically reopen uh, the problem ticket for the problem manager to be able to work through that at that point. Okay, so now that we've got a change ticket, let's go and look at things from a different uh, agent's perspective. The change manager uh, here, um, Harriet, we can see we've got a new change request uh, that's come in, uh, that's popped up through the Notify app, a uh, bit of a shout out there. Um, uh, but uh, yes, we'll just get rid of that. Um, uh, but uh, we'll be able to see in our view here, the change tickets. We've got a new uh, kind of change ticket that's come up. Um, and so what the, uh, the, the change manager is going to do uh, on this ticket, firstly is to liaise with the problem manager uh, as to you know the information around why this change has come about, but then uh, to kind of uh, liaise with the rest of the business to get the right information uh, so that this can be submitted uh, for approval uh, over here within the Approve app. So um, before we get a run away with ourselves uh, with the Approve app, I'll talk about the second app that's working here uh, behind the scenes, which is our Field Conditions app. Now our Field Conditions app allows you to show and hide different fields based on other uh, different settings. For example, if I um, uh, kind of make this uh, ticket uh, a question, you can see a lot of the fields disappear or all of the fields disappear. If I make it a task, I've got a couple of uh, items there. Um, uh, and uh, if I make it a change, then we get all these kind of change tickets that show. Um, and you can kind of do, kind of show it as show and hide things based on any uh, field selection. For example, if I choose uh, the standard replace printer type here, then um, I can kind of show much less fields because it's a much less complicated kind of approval than a, say a normal change. So all of these fields uh, you can you create as just regular custom fields in Zendesk um, and then uh, you decide uh, how they're going to relate to each other using the field conditions app. So that's field conditions. Uh, next up is the approve app. So based on uh, this ticket being uh, created uh, when we spun it up using a task template uh, and the settings of the app, uh, oh, sorry, settings of the ticket that it's a change ticket and what have you, um, the uh, approve app has kicked into gear and automatically said, oh, well, this is a normal change. Therefore, this is the uh, what needs to be approved on this um, and who it's going to be approved by is automatically uh, set within that approval uh, template uh, that is uh, we'll send in a sec. So we can see here that we've got a bunch of fields that require information to be inputted. So we'll do that. So we'll just uh, fill out this information. And as you can see here, as I fill that information out, uh, this uh, kind of um, uh, fills it in within uh, the approve app uh, on a live kind of updating basis here. So uh, let's fill out the rest of these fields and take it from there. Okay, so we've filled out all of these fields now, uh, ready uh, for the uh, the approval. Uh, note that um, you know this is just an example of the type of uh, information that you can collect in relation to a change. Uh, you can create all of your own custom fields. Uh, you could have it so that you can um, uh, uh, you know upload attachments of uh, various files, what have you. Uh, as part of this, it's up to you uh, what information you collect and what information you send out as part of the approval. Um, 
Now, uh, also notice as I'm filling this, these fields out, it's also saying that um, I, I, before we can actually send this approval off, uh, we do need to submit the ticket because this information does not yet exist on the ticket until we click the submit button. However, before we do that, uh, one last thing we'll do here is to uh, create a calendar event uh, where we kind of kind of uh, kind of propose when this change is going to take place. Uh, now, one of the things that our apps do is that uh, they store information in invisible ticket fields, uh, fields that you won't see on the the, the form here. Um, uh, behind the scenes, so if I was to create a calendar event, that information would be stored as part of the ticket not visible, but part of the ticket, so it can be used throughout the rest of Zendesk, whether that's in your uh, triggers or your macros uh, for updating kind of uh, tickets easily or uh, uh, building views, or in this case, we're actually collecting the information that will uh, set in the calendar app within our approve app, uh, like so. So I'm just going to click to create this um, and a, a change event here in uh, our calendar for tomorrow. Um, and as you can see here, now that I've set that, the uh, Approve app is seeing that those fields have been filled in um, and is adding that as part of the approval to be sent. So we'll now submit this uh, as all information to be recorded on the ticket. Uh, and as and now that we've submit this, submitted this, we can send this uh, off for approval. So when we send this off for approval, it'll be sent out as an email to a, a you know an approver or a group of approvers. Uh, so one of the really cool things about uh, the Approve app is that approvers do not need to be agents in Zendesk. They can be absolutely anybody, uh, provided that they are, uh, exist as a user in Zendesk. That could be an end user. Um, so this means that you can kind of um, you know, uh, send uh, approvals off to anybody in your business. Um, you know, there may be people in your business who don't know or care what Zendesk is. They just want to get information and say yes or no to it. So once an approval has been sent off, you are able to see uh, who it's been sent to by checking, uh, kind of clicking this one out here. And we can see that we've set it so that we need a minimum of two approvers of these three to say yes before this approval is considered uh, granted. Um, now, before we go off and do that uh, from the approver's perspective, uh, I should also note here now that um, as a, a change manager, there's not much I need to do on this ticket now, just like the problem manager didn't need to do much on his ticket once the change had been spun up. Once the approval has been sent out, not much that needs to happen until that approval has been uh, action. So I can set this ticket to on hold as well. Um, and we'll be able to see that it's now moved out of the things I need to do within my view here. Uh, and we'll start actioning that um, approval uh, from the emails through, uh, that have been sent to the approvers. So all an approver needs is access to the email like so. They'll get an email that comes in uh, with all the information that we've just typed out here. Um, uh, as part of the approval and they can choose to approve or decline. If they click on approve, they will be taken through to the approvers portal uh, that is specific to them. No other approver would be able to see what they, uh, uh, this approver is uh, seeing right now. Uh, and then they can provide a response based on all of the information that needs to be approved and what has been said uh, previously or what's happened so far previously on uh, the, uh, the approval um, based on uh, information that's been sent, but also what other approvers may have said. Uh, so I'm just going to say yes on this. Um, and uh, note that once you, uh, as an approver, uh, make take an action on a particular approval, uh, this is not a one-trick pony portal. Uh, what uh, happens is that you're taken back to a list of all a whole all of a history of all of your approvals, um, and any other outstanding approvals that require attention will also uh, appear in here that you can also respond to. If we have a look back into this ticket, we'll see that nothing has happened uh, as far as the state goes, but we can see on the approval that we're now waiting for only one of two remaining approvers to say yes. And the uh, statement that's been made by uh, the uh, first approver has come through as a private comment on the ticket. You can decide whether that's going to be private or public as part of the settings. 
So we'll jump in here and uh, make our second approval that we need to do to make this uh, happen. So we'll jump in here and click on approve. And once again, we'll say, yes, no worries. And confirm that. And then we'll come back to the ticket and we'll be able to see Harriet has added this in here. And as a result of hitting that threshold, uh, the approval is now considered granted. So we'll see approval normal uh, change request granted with the information that's been uh, uh, given um, and we can see on the actual in the app here it's also granted um, so yeah um, as far as the flow goes for the change manager you can see that this uh, 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 ticket has now automatically been reopened as a part of that as well so it's now popped into the change managers view again so they know they need to do uh, the next part of whatever the, the flow is. Um, so in this case, uh, we've got our approval to make the change. Now it comes down to implementation. So this is where, you know, anything can happen. You could have it. So if it's a simple change, then that change is done as part of this ticket. And uh, it's just assigned to a different uh, group, implementation group to be able to be done. If it's more complicated, you might want to spin up another change ticket. So you might want to you know, uh, create a, a work order uh, ticket and and spin up uh, you know an, another ticket there and another flow. Uh, once the uh, the you know the implementation has taken place, then you might want further flows. For example, uh, you know you might want to have it so that. The implementation takes place then we go into a, a review state here which kicks off another approval uh, for a, a post implementation review which you could do it could happen automatically it's up to you uh, how you build out this flow but suffice to say once it's been implemented uh, if you've got a review once it's been reviewed uh, the uh, implementation has happened uh, we mark this ticket as uh, as solved like so uh, and then uh, from the problem manager's uh, perspective, we'll be able to see that that ticket has been automatically popped back into their view. Uh, so they'll be able to go in here, see that the change uh, has uh, been uh, resolved, uh, go through that whole uh, conversation and what's happened on, uh, there with the approvals and everything like that, see what, what's happened. And then based on that information, they'll be able to report back to all of the people that are waiting on this problem uh, with all those incidents tickets, uh, simply by resolving or marking this ticket uh, problem ticket as solved uh, with a comment. So yeah, that is a, an example uh, change flow. Uh, hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea what is possible by using a combination of our Sweethawk apps and uh, Zendesk, of course. Uh, if you've got any questions uh, or comments uh, or'd like to just get in touch, uh, you can email us at support at sweethawk.com. Uh, thanks for watching.